There is a glorious past that we once used to have. There is a glorious past which we all look at and become awestruck when we try to look into and ponder the many things and achievements that our predecessors had accomplished. But the reality is that today we're not living that past any longer. Today we're not living in the same times that the books have written about and people have written about within the books. Today we're living in a time where perhaps the Muslim Ummah, despite being one of the largest nations in the world, in numbers, we perhaps are one of the weakest nations suppressed by others. And for a people who are such large in numbers, it is very easy for us to rise again. And that is found within the hadith of Abu Dawood, authentic hadith, in which the Prophet wasallam he said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends at the beginning of every 100 years, a person who ends up reforming the religion for this ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But what we need to understand is the map and the route for us to rise again to the station that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had one given, once given us and granted us. And that is the station of completion. You see, towards the end of the da'wah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had been given a verse which showed us the perfection of this faith. And the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has perfected and completed what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had been granted of legacy, of wahi, of revelation, of sunnah, of hikmah, of wisdom and so forth. And that was the ayah in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that today I have perfected for you, O people, your religion. And I have further perfected my blessing upon you, O people, as well. And Allah continued, and He told us that Allah is pleased for us by having Islam as our faith and our religion. And consider Islam the supreme, that no other object, no other ideology, no other thought, no other idea can supersede. When this verse was revealed, not long after did a man from amongst the Jews come to Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala and he said to Umar ibn Khattab that you have within your scripture a revelation that if we were to get that revelation we would consider that day to be a day that we rejo rejoice in a day we end up taking as an Eid literally as he said and he said, what is that verse? So he replied back and told them the verse. And Umar ibn Khattab said, well, I know exactly where this was revealed upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It was revealed to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Arafah. And it was revealed to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on the day of Jumu'ah. When we, whenever we speak about the topic of reform and reformation, immediately people start to bring within their minds ideas which perhaps weren't there historically. And to some, a reform or a reformation or tajdeed is a reformation wherein something new is being brought within the religion. But we say no, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has perfected the religion. And after perfection, there's only defect. And so similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made the religion the life with which we live, with which our souls live. And in order for us to ensure that this religion is continuing to serve the same task, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala placed within it the mechanism of reformation. And that is found within the hadith of Abu Dawood, authentic hadith, in which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends at the beginning of every 100 years a person who ends up reforming the religion for this ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They said 100 years, why 100 years? Because you see, if we look at every 100 years, for the most part, within the time frame of 100 years, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it such that the grandparents are there, and their children come, and their children come as well. And normally within three generations, the practices that were once there, they end up 
changing and that's why there's always a very severe disconnect between grandchildren and grandparents many a times because societies move and trends change and cultures change and, and so on and so forth. And that goes also for religion at times within the 100 years the message and the legacy that was there at the beginning, it no longer remains. And that's why, what do we say? The Sahaba, the Tabi'een, and the Tabi'ut Tabi'een. Who will come, who will be able to renovate the religion that was once all already there. And when does this 100 year start? According to some of the scholars, and I will not get into the details of it, but according to some of the scholars, it starts from the moment when the Prophet وسلم, he said this hadith. And we have records that likely the Messenger وسلم, he said this right towards the end of his life. And that would mean that the very first person who had been sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be a reformist within this ummah would be Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And that is because right after the death of the Messenger وسلم, there was a lot of problems that started to surface immediately after. There was people who started to deny zakat, there was people who started to apostate, there was people who were unsure about the death of Rasulullah and so on and so forth. Abu Bakr came and they were unsure about who also the Khilafah should be given to. And so Abu Bakr came and many of these occasions he ended up clarifying the misconceptions that were fast arising. So Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu was this first reformist. And thereafter came many people who reformed the religion from the angles wherein the rathatha occurred. Wherein the religion started to perhaps need the re renovation. Allah has placed within the religion the mechanism of that. And that is by sending people who will do this. Now one may say that sure there is renovation. Sure Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does send people who renovate. Why is this topic of paramount importance to us today? The reason why this topic is of paramount importance to us today is for two reasons. Number one, there are those who call to a reformation. And they do that loud and clear. And in the name of reformation, they end up uprooting the very practices that the Prophet ﷺ had brought to us. And he had placed upon that very solid foundation this religion. In the name of reformation. And then this hadith is quoted in order for them to support their agenda of what they call to be reformation, but in reality, it is the destruction of faith. Whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not predefined already, those are the things within the religion which are considered contextual. Everything else Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already defined for us. So if someone is bringing something new to the faith, in reality, they're bringing something which happens to be an innovation within this faith. The process of bringing about a true reform within this faith is to bring the faith back to what it used to be during the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam and what the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam had left this faith at. And the second very important idea is the fact that Allah, when He said that Allah sends at the beginning of every 100 years, who will re rejuvenate, revive, reform this religion for the Ummah? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used the word man. And if we look at usul al fiqh, man is amongst the ways that we can have generality. And that means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can send us more than one person, and it doesn't have to be one person. There can be more than one person in more than one place, in more than one location. Perhaps in one single location, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows for more than one person to be there who will try to bring this faith back to how the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had left it upon the completion and the conclusion of the revelation from Allah rabbul izzati wal jalal. And when we think about reformation, don't think only about re reformation of religion meaning Ilm and knowledge and so on and so forth. Even though that happens to be the primary key to reformation. When we think about reformation, they say you have to think about a number of things. You think about belief. And belief is much greater or larger of a term than what the word aqidah has been simplified to. And that is simply 
theological debates between different sects. That was not meant alone by the word aqidah. It was much more expansive than that. So anything that allows us to feel an internal relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that increases our connection to Allah, that is all part of our belief. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hadn't limited beliefs to simply theological debates. That has its place, that has its time. But along with that, there is all of the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us within the Qur'an which increase our faith and bring us closer to Allah Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal. So we have to reform this angle as well. Becoming closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the beautiful names of Allah Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal. Recognizing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the creation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has made for us. As a poet says, that in every single thing you can find a sign from which you can recognize that Allah Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal is in fact one. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to say in a hadith, think about the bounties and the blessings and all of the beautiful things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted and created. And don't necessarily think about the existence of Allah, right? Because shaitan comes to a person and he says, you came into existence through the birth from this particular mother and so on and so forth. And that person came into existence through there and so on and so forth. All the way till it ends to Adam. Adam was created by Allah. Who created Allah? This is the trick that shaitan plays with the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at that time. And the Prophet ﷺ had given us the guidance to seek refuge in Allah at that moment. From shaitan, the accursed. So the Prophet ﷺ told us the way to rejuvenate and revive that faith within us is by looking at the blessings and bounties of Allah, Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal. And that's why many a times when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to recognize Him, His existence, His power, His majesty, He always tells us about the ayat. And within your souls, look at the creation of the heavens and the the earth because that will naturally make you understand the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and realize the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see, sometimes information alone is not enough. We are creatures that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has cre created based on emotions. We are creatures that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created based on minds as well. And for some people, intellectual stimulation works better. For other people, emotions work better. For other people, a balance of two is required. And that's why when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses us in the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala capitalizes on the emotions and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala capitalizes on, on things which will stimulate the intellect as well. Within one page, you'll find a little bit of everything. Questions that you ask, for which you have to research, immediately you have tears, suddenly you're smiling, and so on and so forth. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala placed the perfect balance within His book for us to understand the type of belief system that is required for us to get closer to Allah Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal. That is the first thing. And the second thing is the actions and practice as well. The practice that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has placed within the, the different legislations of our religion. The practice which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had showed us the perfect way to implement of it through the guidance of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That practice also needs to be rejuvenated. That practice also needs to be revived. And evil culture needs to be, we need to let go of it. And last but not least is the jami'ah. And that is governance. And that is the implementation of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even at the level of state. And the implementation of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by ensuring that all of the freedoms required to Muslims in order for them to practice their religion are all granted and are all there. All of these are aspects within which ref reform is required. And that is true. Even the first or one of the first of the reformists that was there within the Ummah, Umar ibn Abdul Aziz. One of the first angles that he reformed within this Ummah was what? A lot of corruption started to occur. Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, he fought this corruption from the very first day when he became the Khalifa of the Muslimi. And that's why they said he was one of the first and the greatest of reformists because he took all of the, all of the corruption from his own personal family. And you know what? The way we can fix corruption is that any single moment we are the ones that are given the power, we stop 
any form of corruption that we can. And slowly but surely when we say no to corruption, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will allow that corruption to decrease. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will allow for us to come back to that same station and status that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had granted the ummah to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Qur'an, those people who hold fast to this book, and they also establish the prayer as well, we will not let the reward of those people who try to reform go to waste. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala connected true reformation to getting connected to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you see, every single day we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance. We say, اِهْدِنَا الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمُ Oh Allah, guide us to the path which happens to be straight. And Allah guides us on a daily basis by telling us in the very, very next page, that is the book, there is no doubts therein. And that book happens to be guidance for those who have fear. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the tawfiq to implement, learn, teach, practice, preach the guidance of His book. Ameen Ya Rabbil Alameen.